Today's topic is 4.3 solving quadratic equations by completing the square, and that's on pages 234 to 243 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is 20.8 to demonstrate understanding of quadratic equations, including the solution of single variable equations, and that's what we're doing today. We're, also, we're still working on uh, solving single variable equations. And like I said before, the systems of linear quadratic and quadratic quadratic equations in two variables, we'll be doing that later on in the course. Our lesson objectives, number one, to use a process of completing the square to solve a quadratic equation. Number two, to be able to complete the square when your a value is equal to one and we, a value is not equal to one. And number three, to be able to identify an extraneous root based on the context of a question. So, so far this unit, we've used two different methods in order to help us solve quadratic equations. We used graphing the first lesson and we used factoring the second lesson. Today we're focusing on a third method, one that we learned last unit, and it's called completing the square. And it'll help us get to the same place, which is solving quadratic equations. This method will work when the equation is not factorable, so if it's something that you can't factor, and you don't have the time or the ability or the graphing software and actually, to actually graph it. So the ultimate goal is to use the square root property to help us solve the quadratic equation. And that's the ultimate goal of completing the square. So it says solve x squared minus 4x minus 11 equals 0 by completing the square. Write your answer in both decimal and exact form. So in completing the square, if you remember, we wanted to get a binomial squared. And so we're going to take these first two terms and we're going to turn it into a, a perfect square, a trinomial square. But the first thing we're going to do this time, because this equation is equal to 0, we're going to move this 11 to the other side. And that's the only thing that's different in the way that we complete the square in this unit compared to last unit. So we move the 11 to the other side, it becomes positive. So now I'm going to take half of my negative 4, it, that's negative 2, and I'm going to square it, and that becomes 4. Now to balance this thing out, I'm going to add 4 to the other side as well. So we remember, um, last unit we added 4 and we would have subtracted 4 from the same side. Well, in order to balance the equation this time, we're just going to add 4 to both sides. It's still balanced, we haven't really changed it at all. Now, x squared minus 4x plus 4, that turns into x minus 2 squared when you factor that thing. That is called a trinomial square. It's x minus 2 squared, and that equals 15. Now, as I said before, we want to use the square root property when we're completing the square. And now we have a, a binomial squared equals 15. So in order to get rid of the squared sign, we're just going to take the square root of both sides. Now, when we do that, we have to remember that the squared and the square root sign cancel off on the left hand side but when we take the square root we also have to end up putting in a positive and a negative because if you take the square root of 15 it could be positive or negative root 15. And now we're going to move the negative 2 over to the right hand side and to do that we're just going to add 2 to both sides so that now becomes positive 2 plus or minus root 15. So we have two answers here we have 2 plus root 15 and we have 2 minus root 15. Now these are the exact answers. It asks us to give the answers in exact form and we also need to give them in decimal form. So if we take 2 and we add um, root 15, what we get is 5.87 and if we take 2 and we subtract root 15, what we get is negative 1.87. So this is a new method of completing the square. Um, we move the 11 over first and then we still take half of the negative 4 to get negative 2, and then we still square it. Um, and then what we have is something that we can take the square root of both sides, remembering that we have to take plus or minus of the right-hand side of what the square root side. And then we can just move the 2 over. Now, this method only works when there's a 1 in front of our x squared. We will learn what to do when we have something other than a 1 in front of our x squared in our next example. So here's our second example. It says solve negative 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 equals 0 by completing the square. Write your answer in both exact form and decimal form. So when we have this uh, negative 2 in front of our x squared, we want to get rid of that as soon as possible. So we're going to divide everything by negative 2, including the 0 on the right-hand side. So that essentially makes that negative 2 disappear from in front of the x squared. This now becomes 5 over 2x. This becomes negative 1, and that 0 stays as 0. Now we're going to do the same thing as we did um, last example of completing the square. We're going to move the 1 over to the other side, and we're going to leave us some room so we can complete the square on the left-hand side. And now what we did last time, if you recall, is that we take half of this. So half of 5 over 2 is actually 5 over 4, and then we square it. And when we square a fraction, we square both the top and the bottom. And so now we have 25 over 16. 
Now, since we added 25 over 16 on the left-hand side, we're going to add 25 over 16 on the right-hand side. Now, the greatest thing about doing um, completing the square and, and doing it in this specific way is that when you take half of five, 5 over 2, this 5 over 4 is what goes in your brackets. So it's x plus 5 over 4. So it's not you don't actually have to factor this trinomial square. You know that half of this term right here, which is 5 over 4, it's the one that goes inside your brackets. On the right-hand side, we have to add 1 and 25 over 16 together. So that's actually 16 over 16 plus 25 over 16. So on the left-hand side, I get x plus 5 over 4 squared equals, well, 16 plus 25 is 41 over 16. Now I'm at a place where I can take the square root of both sides, which is the whole point of using completing the square. We need to take the square root of both sides. And when I do that, the square root or the squared sign disappears. So I get x plus 5 over 4. And on the right-hand side, I get plus or minus the square root of 41 over the square root of 16, where the square root of 41 is just 41. The square root of 16 happens to be 4. So now if I want to solve for x, which I do, I need to move this 5 quarters over to the right-hand side. So I'm going to subtract 5 quarters. And so I get negative 5 quarters plus or minus root 41 over 4. Now, it's not just coincidence that we have the same denominator here. That works out pretty much every time. So we get negative 5 plus or minus root 41 over 4. So when we, we wanted to find the, exa the, sorry, the answer in both exact form and decimal form, well, here is the exact form, negative 5 plus or minus root 41 over 4. Those are your two answers, the positive and the negative, two answers. And if we were to take negative 5 and add root 41 divided by 4, and take negative 5, subtract root 41 divided by 4, we get two other answers, which are our decimal forms. I'm just going to round them to the second decimal place to the nearest hundredth, so that's 0 0.35 and negative 2.85. So those are our solutions. Now, this thing, normally you wouldn't be able to factor it using decomposition or inspection or anything like that. So completing the square gives us a method in order to factor these things um, so we can get our actual x-intercepts or our roots or our zeros, however you want to call them, um, without actually factoring and without actually graphing either. So here's our last example. It says a soccer ball travels on a path that can be modeled by the equation h of x equals negative 0.016 x squared plus 1.152 x minus 15.2, where x is a horizontal distance traveled by the ball from the goal line, and h of x is the height of the ball. So the first question we're going to answer is how far from the goal line is a soccer ball when it's kicked? And our second one is how far does the ball travel before it hits the ground? So we have an equation h of x equals negative 0.016x squared plus 1.152x minus 15.2. When we're finding the x-intercepts, what we're doing is we're saying that the height is zero because in this case it's when the ball is on the ground and so there's no height there. So that's why we can let that thing equal zero. Now, we don't want to complete the square with a crazy number in front, negative 0.016. So we're going to divide each term by negative 0.016. And that means this term, that term, that term, and the, the zero is also going to be divided. And when we do that, we find out that it works out quite nicely. We get x squared minus 72x plus 950. So now we're going to complete the square. I'm going to move the 950 to the other side. So I'm going to write it as x squared minus 72x, and that's going to be equal to negative 950. I take half of negative 72. That's negative 36. I square that thing and that is 1296. But remembering that I need to balance out the equation, I'm going to add 1296 to the other side as well. So now on the left hand side I get, I get uh, x minus 36 squared equaling 346. Well I could take the square root of both sides now. I get x minus 36 equals plus or minus the square root of 346. Now I'm talking about a real life uh, sort of situation here. So I'm not gonna be using exact answers. I'm gonna be using decimal answers. But before I do that, I'm just gonna manipulate it so I get what I'm gonna punch into my calculator. I'm gonna punch in 36 plus root 346. And when I do that, I get 54.6. That'll be yards. And when I get 36 minus root 346, I get 17.4 yards. So we need to really think about what this uh, 
what this equation is, is mimicking, and that's the path a soccer ball travels. So if we're looking at it in terms of a graph, where our two x-intercepts are 17.4 and 54.6. So the path ball looks something like that. So the first question said, how far from the goal line is a soccer ball when it's kicked? Well, if we're calling the goal line zero, that means this first x-intercept is going to be the answer to that question, and that's 17.4 yards. Then it says, how far does the ball travel before it hits the ground? Well, that'll be the distance between the two x-intercepts. So that'll be 54.6 minus 17.4, and that means it travels 37.5 yards. So it's important to not get freaked out when there's decimals in, involved. Remember that you're just following the same process every time, but you need to make sure that it's a 1 in front of this x squared, so we would divide, in this case, everything by negative 0.016. We end up getting numbers that are a lot easier to deal with, um, and when you have a calculator in front of you, it's not hard to take the square root of something like 346 and then convert it to a decimal. So in summary, completing the square is a method that helps us solve quadratic equations when factoring won't work. None of those equations that we used would have been easy to factor. So uh, we can use something called completing the square. It will always be easier to use your completing the square when a equals 1. So you always want to divide your entire equation by your value of a. So the a, remember, is that value in front of the x squared. Always divide everything by a, and then you'll get an a value of 1 in front, and it's easier to complete the square. Your answers can be expressed in exact form, and exact form is radicals and fractions, or in decimal form. Make sure to interpret your answers. Simply finding your two answers may not be what the question is asking. Like in our last example, we need to interpret those two answers to help us answer the actual question. So our assignment is on pages 240 to 243. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you in class.